Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, well, I was actually raised in, I was born and raised in Massachusetts. My family's from North Carolina, so I always was kind of like a, a hybrid in a sense growing up because, you know, I had that kind of Southern um, twang, if you will, or just kind of like mm. that that um, that kind of dynamic growing up in the Northeast. Uh, I, li I currently live in California. I went to college in North Carolina. I ended up um, uh, going to an HBCU, you know, historically black college. And so uh, John C. Smith was the school I went to. And so I went there initially as like, you know, as an athlete um, and, you know, really completely changed and ended up, you know, becoming a more so, you know, political activist. And that's essentially what I'm now, you know, I'm an activist. I'm, a consultant, um, an artist, uh, among other things, but um, but yeah, no, it's it, I, it's very fluid in terms of my upbringing of like having this northeast. You know, when going to uh, a, a Catholic school, so I did like the you know the whole literally like the whole jock thing, and then eventually you know went to went to school, went to college, <laughs> whatever folks want to call it, got woke, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just, like, <laughs> um just uh, you know really tried to morph into um you know someone within the political realm that's always pushing the needle in terms of just as as best as we can be or i guess what people would consider as progressive as we can be but um i don't necessarily like that label but um but yeah that's that's kind of like a, i can go in, in depth or whatever about different different things yeah that i've been a part of or done or whatever but so I've, I've created Black Culture Weekly, uh, which is uh, a subsidiary of Aspiration Unlimited, which is uh, my LLC and is my, you know, my brand, my credo, uh, if you will. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I can do anything, you can do anything, you know, our, our aspirations are unlimited. That's like kind of like the, the overarching uh, company or, or uh, venture, if you will. Uh, and then Black Culture Weekly is kind of marrying a lot of the activism, um, you know, that I'm a part of, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter related activism or just uh, mobilizing Black communities. We just wrapped up a program in Georgia with Woke Vote, where we were on the ground uh, helping with, um, you know, uh, reaching Black voters in Georgia. I had to make sure that they turned out in this election, right, wow. in the runoff election. And so my work over the years has more so been working, whether it had been, I worked in government for two years, um, at the last two years of uh, Barack Obama's presidency, I, I worked uh, as a liaison um, for Congresswoman Alma Adams, um, who was uh, the hundredth woman of Congress and the second black woman ever in, in North Carolina's um, congressional delegation. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, I worked as a kind of literally a li liaison between the government and the people basically in terms of you know casework and just working with, with folks and so, so how did so that. walk me through like how as so okay so you're you basically started an llc you, you're you mm -hmm. basically were like i want to help change things so you started yeah. your own organization okay yeah. and then you started to walk me through like how you map this thing out and like how you get to to, to doing some of these things yeah um so you know i had to give that kind of backstory and context of like yeah the work i did in government because really that's what kind of like helped me have foresight if you will in terms of what mm -hmm. we're trying to accomplish with, with black culture weekly um and and you know informing the llc and wanting to be independent wanting to be an entrepreneur um but mm -hmm that you know it really was mapped out basically and realizing just you know it's not a it's not a profound point but you know that usually you know uh, black organizations or um organi organizations run by people of color we'll say are you know are often you know either underfunded or just uh overlooked um and so um, and then even not even just the organizations, but even just the ideas and the concepts and whether it be contracting, um, if you're a, a government contractor, you're a contractor for nonprofit organizations, whatever, or consultant mm -hmm. as opposed to contractor. But, um, you know, oftentimes those ideas just aren't, aren't heard. And so my work has been about really um, kind of synthesizing the the organizing world right like the the everything that's happening on the ground as well mm -hmm. as digital and like this like being like this kind of you know millennial in the space obviously 
um, and trying to redefine that. I've done that, like I said, in, in Congress and then um, on a presidential campaign with, with Tom Steyer, um, congressional- How do you get those, uh, like how do you get those uh, spots or like how? Well, yeah, it's a very, <laughs> and that's the thing is that it's such a who you, you know, who you know, um, um, network of folks, right? Like it's like the organizing space is such like a, it's an echo chamber of people that just, you know, if you weren't like, I worked on a, a congressional campaign in mm. 2013, 2014. And since then I've probably gotten however many emails just because of that or been a, been a part of, you know, to, to certain mm. email listeners. But the issue is the issue that I'm trying to, I appreciate that question because that helps me paint what the problem is and, and the solution of what I'll, one of the solutions anyway that we're trying to, it's just one solution, but um, and yeah. over saturating that market of people that are usually uh, uh, not representative, like I said, people of color, women, LGBT folks, like it's not always like there, it's, it's usually frankly for white males that are like privy to that information or to those email listeners, like on average, I guess I'll say. And so now, you know, really trying to diversify that as well. That's one of like the tenets of like what Black Poetry Weekly and what we're trying to do or doing, I should say, um, is really like stand in that gap and be able to, a lot of times, you know, that may come across someone's desk and they, you know, they're not thinking about the equity portion of, you know, talent development or talent searching or whatever, right? Um, but that's something that, you know, that we're you know, seeking to definitely ramp up more so in 2021 because Black Culture Weekly is still, you know, a relatively new organization, but it was something, like I said, that was mapped out over the past 10 years of my political uh, and digital uh, journalistic career, I guess I'll say. Um, so what's the goal with Black Culture Weekly? Uh, so there, I mean, there's several goals. I mean, we want to, you know, support, uh, number one, want to, um, support black owned businesses and, you know, be able to uh, give them, you know, uh, uh, free, free press in the sense of, you know, just driving attention uh, to them. So we've created an app actually that allow, you know, that connects to, um, you know, to black businesses, but as well as black news. And then, you know, that may be about a leader that may be about, you know, like I said, a business person, it may be about an upcoming person who's dropping a book, a kid who's dropping a book, who knows, you know, uh, there's so many different um, kind of different content streams, I'll say, you know, um, that we're, and that's actually how we, how we came upon uh, your organization uh, and became members of your great uh, business um, because we needed, uh, we're also, what we're doing is we're going to donate uh, apps to Black businesses as well and donate websites to them. Uh, so we've already, oh, interesting. yeah, so we've, yeah, so we've been doing that. So I needed uh, stock photos uh, for one of the uh, websites um, uh, and apps that we we're building. Um, and so one of the more exciting projects. And so that's how we kind of actually came uh, um, across you, what you're doing, uh, and, and we love you, and we love we love it. Uh, you know your your vision, and 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 celebrate your success. So so congrats on that. If I don't say anything uh, on all the Forbes thank stuff. You. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank thanks so much. We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> but we also got some of like the Black Lives Matter photos. We're actually publishing a book. We got them in museums. They're uh -huh. in uh, music videos. Like we're really trying to maximize. Well, for for me, the mission was always these images tell a story, they're powerful. Absolutely. Why are they on our phone? Why are they on our hard drive? Like that's, I think the same thing with what you're trying to, to do is that these stories already exist, but nobody's hearing them or the people already exist working on these subjects, but um, nobody is nobody's distributing it. So I see Scopio as a distribution place. Like I am here to help you get your stuff out there and get more people to use it. and and that I really think will add value to the planet. Yeah. And with you, you're trying to synthesize information and organize it in a way. But but it's interesting because like, are most of your subscribers like diverse? Like, do they ever get to the, is it like an echo chamber also where you're like, oh, I'm just sharing the same information with people that already know about this? Or like, how mm. are you able to like, get it to more people like, or is that not important? For your mission like how do you feel about that um your question is a great one because we were definitely worried about 
you know, being in the echo chamber, like I said, of like, you know, political or activist types, right? And so with that in mind, that was the reason for us to expand um, beyond just like, you know, uh, political news content, which really was kind of born out of, right, of being able to tell kind of the up and coming stories of like, you know, activists or, you know, people running for office or whatever. But what we've done is mm -hmm. we've diversified in different kind of like lifestyle segments, right? So, you know, we've got black fitness gurus, right? For people that are into fitness, we've got um, uh, bl the black creatives uh, corner on our, on our website as well that gets into is art, um, you know, across mediums. Um, and then there's, mm -hmm. there's also um, uh, black real estate, uh, black real estate, uh, black real estate network. Then there's, uh, we're gonna, we're actually building out our Black Healers Network, which will, which will be um, folks that are, you know, within, you know, frontline workers, because we're obviously seeing that that's a major demographic that we want to, you know, cater to, uh, folks that are frontline workers during this this COVID epidemic, um, and so, our uh, pandemic, excuse me, um, and so, you know, so so different different strokes for different folks in that sense. And so we're really trying to diversify kind of our, um, our content stream so that we, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we're talking to, to various types of people and it's not just your, you know, just your political hack like myself, I guess. Um, What's uh, your strongest channel? Is it email? Um, I think our strongest channel, um, I wouldn't even say that. I, I guess I would say right now, probably Facebook, our Facebook uh, page. Mm -hmm is probably the best best medium in terms of how we're mm -hmm. communicating with folks um and then probably the uh the website itself um people seem to be interacting with that pretty regularly the mm -hmm. app um like slowly um kind of gaining traction but frankly there's still some you know so still some stuff we we want to work out and add and just make better in terms of user experience um from being <laughs> vulnerable and honest um and who's, so, a, who's supporting you like with all this like who's your team um well we have a team of and that's the thing it's, it's various it's various folks but largely a lot of um political folks but we've got uh Joaquina Clinton who is actually a uh a, a, a a strategist, um, or she's the senior advisor for the DNC, but she's uh, also just mm -hmm. you know, a dynamo as herself, you know, herself as an entrepreneur. Uh, and so she's one of our top advisors. And then um, author and a progressive attorney out of uh, Virginia, uh, Stephanie Morales is another uh, senior advisor. Um, and so she's, you know, she kind of like bridges this world of, like I said, politics mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship. Um, and then also just kind of like uh, women empowerment um, and making sure that we have uh, an, an equity lens as it relates to that and women and in, in, in what we're doing. Um, but we're still like, you know. What still... about on the digital side? Like, how are you, how can you donate apps and websites? Who's building yeah. those? What's that about? Yeah. So uh, honestly, a lot of it uh, lies with me. You know, I'm, I'm building a lot of these things. Um, because as you know, there's apps to build apps these days, um, which is an amazing thing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, just general knowledge of how to do that has been how I've, you know, like what we've, we built beta apps for probably five or six different organizations at this point, you know? And so it's just about, wow. you know, for me anyway, honestly, it's the time, you know, just to be, to be honest, we don't have, yeah you know, a ton, a ton of uh, money, um, you know, it's a lot of this is very service based and oriented, uh, just to, because just, just the general, you know, how, how, how its owner is, right, how, how the, how the founder is, I'm just a service based person. Um, yeah. And I really didn't, you know, I didn't create this as a means to, you know, to, to make a bunch of money as, although, you know, we know that that's um, something we're like having to, you know, try to pivot to in terms of different revenue streams. And so mm -hmm. we're, you know, we've got some merch, you know, that we're, we've put out recently. Um, and then it's going to be, you know, a bunch of other stuff too, that um, in terms, you know, just ads and stuff like that, that we're going to, um, you know, really try to start to capitalize on. But what, what is like the biggest thing that you're excited about that you feel like, oh, thank God this is lifted for me now. Or like, I feel like I finally have the opportunity because because yeah. I feel like everything has, I mean, for me in my business, I feel like, wow, like people are speaking differently and thinking differently. What, yeah. what do you feel like is? Yeah. Um, well, I guess, I guess it's kind of twofold in the sense of, 
and internally in the business, like what will make me like feel like, oh, like I'm good, like this is this is great. I think internally and then it's externally, right, in terms of like the impact um, that I would make on, you know, our readership or viewership, or whatever. Um, and so I think internally, it's definitely just once the, because I write a lot of the stories too, you know, I write a lot of the stories that Black Culture Weekly um, is doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once, once it's become a platform, I think that people just naturally come to and want to tell their stories through and, and that, um, I guess, just that continuity I think mm -hmm. once that like really starts to pick up, I imagine probably hopefully within three or four months, I imagine uh, this is what I'm projecting anyway. But um, once that happens and I'm able to focus on all the other things, because I'm trying to literally write the stories, I'm trying to build the apps, yeah. I'm trying to do all these things, frankly. Um, and so, you know, I just feel like once that's taken care of, um, then we'll be in it. And we got a, you know, we've got a great, um, um, you know, advisor for that too, uh, Brianna Rhodes. Uh, she's, she actually works for Blavity uh, currently, who's, um, I, people ask me about competitors. And I don't believe in competition in, in terms of what we're doing. I don't we're either. Aggregating and partnering. Yeah, and you're all, by the and by the way, you're all working towards the same objective. Like exactly. you're trying, so why would you <laughs> think they're competitors? Also, Morgan is like amazing. And, yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like you would you want her to be her competitor you know <laughs> so yeah, more a force of nature like she's amazing i um i had the, i heard her uh, speak and i was like wow this is awesome just like going for it like at that speed is something i always admire like yeah. you know just don't let people resources. stop you she shares her resources like i feel like she gives so much of herself too you know what i mean like is she she does all these like you know entrepreneur like boot camp things like she's great she's yeah i can't i can't speak highly enough about that. so but but to go back to the question like do you feel like something has changed or do you think that there's more of an opportunity now and what do you feel like that is for you in the yeah. past like you know months and everything with all of like the new awareness for what you're trying to do yeah no i i'm that is a, another great question because I'm really like trying to catch my breath from like all of the opportunities that are kind of like arising and trying to be timely and not, you know, drop the ball on anything if I'm being real because yeah. there's so many different things to play, right? So it's funny because I was having this conversation with my grandmother and my grandfather like yesterday. <laughs> I don't usually have this conversation with my grandmother and my grandfather, which is, which is why it's funny. But just like, for me anyway, the political agenda of like what's about to happen right now, right? Like just like all of the various, you know, uh, everything we're seeing with uh, say Ilhan Omar and telling that story of like black women being who are pushing this like this political agenda forward that's going to hopefully save America. And then there's, you know, there's just, there's just a whole bunch of like political stuff at play, but then at the same time, yeah. You know, because of the work that we've done in Georgia, there's still a lot of relationships there that we still, you know, need to, there's a lot of stories there we still need to tell and, and yeah. respect to the runoff election, right? So there's so many different, um, um, you know, just different kind of piles, you know, that we're trying, you know, we're trying to manage at this, at this point in time. And so, but it's exciting. It's super exciting. Um, but I think that there is such a, there's such a, want and a need particularly for black stories right now and so being yeah. in that position obviously that very unique position um to be able to tell them um and then not even just tell them but also even shaping them right like like the work we like i said the work we did in georgia we knocked on forty thousand doors um uh, or helped knock on thirty forty thousand doors because with wofo um uh, led by duana thompson who's amazing uh, and if you haven't talked mm -hmm. to her uh but uh yeah, no, she's, she's, she's great. Um, but yeah, like, you know, working with going back and, 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 and following up on those partnerships, because that is a major aspect of the organizing or, or um, something we're seeking to create a solution for is that oftentimes, you know, organizations will go into a community, you know, for an election and then they'll leave and then there's no kind of interaction. And so therefore, that's where the voter drop off comes from or the phenomenon of voter yeah. drop off, right? Um, and so we want to make sure that we're, you know, doing that, but we have an opportunity to do it in a creative way where we're 
maybe doing something like this with people on the ground. You know, um, we did a series very similar to this where it was like kind of like a, um, a Zoom, um, you know, um, uh, conversation basically with different like uh -huh. college students and stuff like that during uh, the run or leading up to the runoff election. And so we want to continue to do things like that to engage the community, even if we aren't physically there, obviously, but we have partners that are physically there. Um, and, and, and tell those stories still, you know, because they're still. Um, so what's your, like, uh, how do you, like, um, re-energize yourself? I feel like you're putting yourself at a, in a hard place where you're like, I'm going to do social justice work, and I'm, like, the martyr here. Like, how are you energizing your... <laughs> well, that's my, my first album. It's called Martyrs, right? My first album. Uh, I love it. Literally. I love uh, it. Uh, where, like, how do you re-energize yourself? Because I feel like you have a big mission ahead of you. You've already made some progress. You've already started your connections and your content and everything. Like, how do you energize yourself? Oh, man. For you those just... that are out there that are similarly trying to also make a change or, you know, but they probably feel like, oh, how am I going to catch the balls in the air right now? <laughs> well, I just said it. I mean, music, I make music. Like I'm an artist. Like I, I, that's like my therapy, honestly, like I'm making music right before literally le right <laughs> leading up to this conversation. I'm, I've got a, you know, I've got an iMac in front of me and my speakers and, you know, my headphones and, and all this good jazz. Um, but no, I, I think that that's is so important for an entrepreneur is to not just simply not music per se, but like just having that thing that's a release that feels, you know, um, therapeutic and feels like healing and doesn't, you know, require too much of you beating yourself up, right? Because I think for me, music is like, oh, like I'm, I'm okay at this. This is just fun, but I, you know, I'm, I take it serious. But it's, it's really, it's not like work for me. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's incredibly fun. I don't know how else to say that, but. Um, you know, I think it's important that we have that release as entrepreneurs, as people that, you know, are, are setting goals for yourself and mm -hmm. having anxiety about reaching them. Um, something that's just kind of, it just kind of comes easy to you and that you're able to um, embrace, you know, I think that that's mm -hmm. so important, you know, and it, may, it looks different for everyone else, right? It might be, I don't know, shit, walking your dog or something <laughs> for someone else. I don't know, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just having that, 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 that peace and, and being able to revel in that peace and it, and it be undisturbed is, is, is so crucial, but yeah. Yeah, especially probably now, cause you're probably like, somebody else should be fighting this battle for me, you know? <laughs> like by now, it's someone else's job to like work. Like Man. we're done here. It's yeah. like your everyone's vocal cords are like done. Yeah, you speak of my whole life right now. That, that, <laughs> it's just funny because I'm, um, so I'm about to get married in April, right? And oh, so, congratulations. Thanks, thanks. And so after the election, like directly after the election, I told myself, I was like, I'm gonna like, everything that you just said, basically, like, like so I'm, everyone else is just continue, they need to continue doing fighting stuff. I'm, I'm just gonna chill to, to my wedding, <laughs> just enjoy life and just, you know, we, we recently moved to um, Alameda, California. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but it's just uh -huh. like, you know, for a kid that grew up in cold Massachusetts and then country southern, you know, North Carolina, like to be where I am now is just like it's a blessing. And so I'm trying, I told myself that I'm just going to revel in our new blessing because we've only been here for a couple months um, before I had mm -hmm. to go to Georgia. Um, and so we're just trying to enjoy, you know, our time leading up to the wedding. But, um, and that's the thing, that's the thing too, that maybe that's advice is like, is like really just find time for the joy and just being still with people yeah. you love if you're you know, right or if you're someone that's whatever like being grounded in that time of what really matters I think is like is also therapeutic and also like this centering right like because we, we worry about meeting deadlines and you know all this yeah. different stuff and we forget to be just still as my mom would say just sit, sit down somewhere sit down somewhere like my mom <laughs> so, um, and I, honestly, that's usually when I have my best ideas um, is when I'm able to just be grounded and be still. And I'm not literally yeah. on the computer, but I'm just like looking up at the, you know, <laughs> at, at, <laughs> at the ceiling, you know. Um, but yeah. I hear you. And also, by the way, joy is the biggest creativity driver. 
Yeah, like yeah. they people always say like pain is a creativity driver anger is a creativity driver if you really like feel happy and joyous like you see you can like really add so much positive impact and the way you describe things and talk about them and then like you're just adding more joy to the planet and then that is like great you know if everyone was feeling that good then your music is good your movies are good your streets are like better you know everything is like so there's mm -hmm. such like a a value to new ideas that come from joy. So it's actually a part of this process is to be able to enjoy your life. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we have uh, we have to stop now. I definitely am going to have my editors follow up with you. Maybe we can showcase some of your music also or any other things that you want uh, yeah. to make this more uh, vibrant of a story. And we might mix a few other organizations too. Uh, yeah. We'll let we'll be in touch with you and see what uh, is possible. Cool. What, 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 one quick question before we go. With that being yeah. said, do you, do you all do, do you all do stock music as well? Like stock, like 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 uh, stock, um, like scores, if you will. Do you do um, we don't, but we list our artists that do have it. So if okay. you have it, then, I uh, I submit some some stuff for you. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, we'll do that. Too. Um, we can uh, let's start by seeing your audio and putting it in because we do have also a lot of music uh like studios and stuff that are scopio customers so mm -hmm. we can even just like be like hey here's a video that we did if you want to check it out cool 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 okay well i'll uh i'll shoot stuff to you in an email then and i appreciate you you're awesome and you're, you're, you're awesome you're lebanese right i'm just... jordanian but my business partner is lebanese Okay, I don't know why I thought I saw when I was like looking you up. I thought I saw something about Lebanon, but because great. because we we did a lot for after the explosion, uh, we raised fifteen thousand dollars. We went and distributed it. We have a team in Lebanon also, and uh, there's we've done a lot of storytelling about Lebanon. We have more stories this year because mm -hmm. it's just crazy. Like it's so hard what's happening there, and there's like a black like blackout like nobody really knows but they're suffering the biggest economic crisis health like crisis they now they had this explosion and probably has so much environmental damage it ha happened in the ocean and and yeah in people's lives so it's not, it's well especially for the migrant workers they're having a very hard time too like people that live there but are not the electricity like they don't even get electricity it's yes. crazy um there's yeah. a lot of political issues so uh, we're pat really passionate about it. We talk about it a lot. Well, that's awesome that you're doing that work because I have my lady who raised my my adoptive grandmother is Lebanese, so I thought. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my sister. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's so cute. Yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, no, keep up all that great work. That's that's Thank awesome you. doing that. Um, and you'll be rewarded by whatever higher power you're into is going to reward you for you know for for that. Um, so yeah. Keep it up. All right, yeah. Jeremiah. Okay, so we'll be in touch. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye.